For the next in our series of videos, we're now going to look at the Cromwell Cruiser tank. The Cromwell Cruiser was in service from 1942 to 1952. It had a crew of five, an armour of 76 millimetres, um, which was actually quite good for a cruiser tank at that particular period, and also weighed about 27 and a half tonnes. The Cromwell Cruiser was used predominantly by 7 Armour Brigade, more famously known or referred to, of course, as the Desert Rats. At a particular time, the rest of the British Armour Brigades were then adopting the American Shermans. From the front profile of the Cromwell, you can see actually how small this vehicle is. Above me, you can see very clearly the main armament. And also, just to the left of me there, you can see the first of our 2.7.92 millimetres machine guns. The first one mounted here, and the second one mounted just to the right of the main armament. Also, another thing that's very obvious when you have a look at the Cromwell is the size of the hatches. Certainly when we go inside there, you'll have a much clearer example of how tiny it is when comparing that five people actually manned this particular tank. The driver's compartment is located just behind me there, and you can see quite clearly to the left and the right, there are also episcopes. OK, so now we're on top of the Cromwell. First of all, I want you to get an impression of how small the actual complete size of it is. It's absolutely tiny compared to a lot of tanks that you'll see. If you look at the front of the turret, you can see quite clearly on the left and the right there, there are two episcopes or periscopes that the crew could actually see out of very badly when they were inside and closed down. Another thing I want you to get an appreciation for is again the size of the hatches that you find on the Cromwell. Obviously, like most tanks, we've got the loader's hatch and also the commander's hatch. But if I open one of these hatches, you can see that the space is absolutely tiny. On either side of the episcopes or periscopes then, we can see that it's got a very, very, very simple uh, means of actually extracting the fumes when the gun fires. Obviously, a lot of the fumes that fire when the main armament goes off are toxic to the crew. Moving across then to the back decks of the Cromwell. Um, very, very sleek, the actual design of the Cromwell. You can see there's not a lot of rubbish located on the back decks of here. The transmission compartment and the engine was a V12 27 litre developing 600 horsepower and it was actually a modified version of the same engine that you'd find in the Spitfire, the modified Merlin engine. The suspension on the Cromwell was very straightforward. As you can see quite clearly, Christie suspension, obviously with no top rollers, and also five sets of road wheels located on each side. Each one of these road wheels is secured by means of a locking nut. To the rear of the Cromwell, and then of course you've got the sprocket wheel. Here we are now inside the turret of the Cromwell. Um, as you can see, not a lot of room as well in here. A few things, major things to point out. Firstly, we can see in a really nice condition the original radio set. This was the wireless set number 19. Underneath there, storage container which contained the periscopes or the prism. If we move across, you can see there are numerous storage compartments which contain ammunition. One just on my front right, and also I'm sat on one at the moment. The breech mechanism opening device, located just here and also the breech itself. Just to the left of the breech there, you can see the stock or the butt of the machine gun. We've got a brow pad for the sight, located directly underneath it. Just to the left of that, you can see one of the episcopes or periscopes. And directly beneath that, you can see the Travis gearbox. Some of the controls, the handle down at the bottom there, is a very simplified version to give you powered left or right Travis. And just to the right of that, is the very obvious elevation hand wheel. 